What up, gamers? It's your host, North, coming at you with some more D&D help. Today, we're talking about campaign modules. Fun. So, if you know, 5th edition of D&D started back in, like, August 2014 when the first player's handbook came out. You know, if you count the playtest stuff beforehand, it started a little bit earlier. But August 2014, and Wizards of the Coast has been publishing modules ever since, just pumping them out. The first book they published was the uh, was the start of a two-parter series, Horde of the Dragon Queen. And the first book is Horde of the Dragon Queen, which introduces the characters uh, to the cult of the Dragon Queen and the nefarious plot to revive Tiamat. Tiamat is an evil dragon goddess with five heads. And if you had to guess, she's also called the Queen of the Dragons. Oh. In the second book of this two-part campaign, is called Rise of Tiamat. It is recommended that you play through the first book before you do the second book, but not needed. Rise of Tiamat starts the adventures off, basically finishing up with the campaigns of the first book, and then the Avengers attempt to defeat Tiamat. Attempt. Now, on to the next module. We got Princes of the Apocalypse. In this book, the Avengers are conscripted to deal with climate change. The climate change in Forgotten Realms is controlled by four elemental evil cults. Earth, Wind, Water, and Fire. Each cult wants to complete a ritual to bring their respective elemental evil baddie back into the world. The Ventures defeat each of the cults and solve the issues of climate change in the Forgotten Realms. The fourth module is called Out of the Abyss. In this module, your stuff gets stolen often. You also explore the Underdark and all of its inhabitants. Here, the adventurers will realize that everyone is being corrupted by the Demon Lords. The Demon Lords, mind you, should definitely not be here. The party is tasked to round them up and banish them back to the Abyss where they came. This might also include fighting one or two Demon Lords, but it should be fine. Should. At the end, you can also trash a Drow City, so all in all, it's a pretty fun adventure. The fifth module is the classic, Curse of Strahd. Mwah. In this book, adventurers are invited into the wonderful demiplane of Barovia. And by wonderful, I mean horrible and scary with amazing creatures like werewolves, vampires, and hags. The man responsible for trapping you is the namesake of the book, Strahd von Zarevich. A vampire who is really down bad. <laughs> like, bad. It is up to the party to deal with Strahd and save the inhabitants of Barovia from his evil clutches. In the sixth module, also another banger, is called Tomb of Annihilation. The adventurers are placed in the jungles of Chult, a dangerous place with all forms of creatures like dinosaurs and zombies. The adventurers are now tasked with finding the source of a deadly curse. The curse is afflicting all the lands. With barely any information of the layout of Chult or where to look, the adventurers will find themselves vastly unprepared. Even though they are unprepared, they'll still find and stop the curse with ease. Kinda. The seventh module is a two-parter as well. It is uh, the Waterdeep two-parter, with the first book, Waterdeep Dragon Heist. It is a short adventure that takes the adventurers through a heist to obtain a secret treasure in Waterdeep. The module is interesting because the setting and villains the adventurers can face change on each play session, making no two playthroughs ever the same. The eighth module is the second part to the Waterdeep two-parter. It's called Dungeon of the Mad Mage. This adventure is a first for 5th edition D&D, as it takes the characters all the way up to level 20. This is the highest level in D&D and has never been done 5th edition before. How do they accomplish this, you might ask? 
Well, they send the adventurers through one dungeon that has 23 layers to it. The Dungeon of the Mad Mage. This wouldn't be so bad, but each level of this dungeon can be considered an adventure by itself. Have fun. Now for the ninth module is Baldur's Gate Descent into Avernus. In this book, the characters hear about a town that has disappeared off the face of the earth. And there's also rumors that Baldur's Gate itself is going to disappear as well. Being the good Samaritans, your party, of course, is going to look into the issues and find out that the original town was pulled down into the first layer of hell, Avernus. In Avernus, the party has to deal with all sorts of powers, such as Zariel, the Archduke of Avernus, and, oh, <laughs> would you look at that, Tiamat, again. Oopsies. Afterwards, the party will be able to turn the town back to normal on the surface. Should be able to. The last module that we currently have, of course, Wizards is releasing more, is called Icewind Dale, Rhyme of the Frost Maiden. In this module, you are placed in the frigid north in a region called Icewind Dale. Here, the winter never ends because the goddess of winter, Oral, doesn't want to pay for the heating bill. Everyone else is just forced to suck it up and deal with it. There is some other stuff going on with an ancient civilization and metallic dragons, but none of that really matters. And that's all the main modules. We're all caught up from what all the wizards' official sources. Well, I'm also forgetting that there's anthology modules. In between all these modules I announced, a wizards also released three modules that are basically mini adventures in one book. We got Tales from the Yawning Portal, Ghost of Salt Marsh, and Count Keep Mysteries. Each book will contain a bunch of mini adventures that DMs can run individually by themselves as one-off sessions, or you can try and tie them into your ongoing campaigns and kind of build up your world from there. Each adventure is just self-contained and doesn't have anything to do with anything else in those books, and it's just all one-off sessions. If you want to know how all these adventures and all these modules tie together in the chronological order, it goes as following. So we've got the start with Out of the Abyss, followed by the Dragon Horde, uh, the Horde of the Dragon Queen duo, then Icewind Dale, Storm King's Thunder, Princess of the Apocalypse, Curse of Strahd, Tomb of Annihilation, both Waterdeep books, then finally we fin finish off with Descent into Avernus. Mind you, this is the timeline that I can get. There is a lot of dates in the books that kind of counteract each other, and a lot of books, such as like To Annihilation, Curse of Strahd, and Princess of the Apocalypse, kind of take place around the same time frame. This is the best I can come up with, and it's a pretty accurate timeline. If you want to find any of these modules, feel free to swing by the Grand Prairie Public Library and see what modules we have here. Uh, just come check the shelves, and a bunch of librarians will be definitely willing to help you guys out. Anyways, I'm North, your host. Thanks for watching, and have a wonderful day.